Performing tonight on the Expressions Classical Series, Mignarda. The lute is actually pretty well considered to be derived from the Arabic oud. In fact, the word lute is derived from the term al oud, which means the wood. It's considered to have been brought into Europe um, by crusaders, but we have no idea. We, ha we have no way of knowing that. Just by looking at the iconography, we can judge that it entered Europe at a pretty early age. It was a, a very popular instrument for, for hundreds of years in European history. 
a lutenist was a very intimate sort of part of the royal household. And they were there, you know, you, you can't just switch on the CD player or the radio and listen to music. If you, if you wanted music, you had to have a person playing it to you.
The thing that, that drew us to this music, both of us to this music from different directions, is really sort of the, uh, the quiet and, and sensitive and subtle aesthetic of the music. It's, uh, it's music from a different age when uh, things weren't quite so hectic, there wasn't quite so much industrial noise happening, hence the very quiet uh, presentation of the music. Because this music was so much about the text and the poetry and the rhetorical devices of, of the 16th century, um, some people will, will respond to it on that level and they'll be completely into the form of the poetry and the, the, the language. We think that's actually a great thing and it's a rare opportunity right now for people to actually experience something that requires attention span and focus. Oh, 
This next piece also um, by Tromboncino was on a text by, written by Petrarch, the, the famous poet Francesco Petrarch. The odd thing about this song is it, it wants to go fast, but the poetry is very sad. <laughs>
You may have noticed that most of this music is fairly sedate and we have to take a nap after a song like that. <laughs> so we'll do the next best thing and we'll play another sedate piece. We've been trying not to burden you with every single poem of, you know, every single bit of text that we're singing because this is not a graduate seminar, it's a concert. But this one's particularly lovely. When love bends her lovely eyes to the ground and with her, her own hands gathers together her wandering breath into a sigh, then looses it in a clear, soft, angelic, divine voice. I feel my heart sweetly stolen away, and my thoughts and desires so change within me that I say, now comes the final plundering of me, if heaven reserves for me so virtuous a death. This was pop music.
We're going to, to uh, use another richer card to lead you to, toward the end of the 16th century to the music of Luca Marenzio, who's one of our favorites. But another richer card by Francesco da Milano. Thank you. 
the last part of our program is music of John Dowlin. His music is just incredibly deep and, and nuanced. He was probably the most famous lutenist of his time, but he didn't really get that coveted uh, appointment to play as the lutenist for Queen Elizabeth because she was kind of afraid of him. He was, he was a difficult personality and... Um, he thought very highly of himself. And he was Catholic <laughs> and they we're not really sure how much of, of her wariness of him was. He could have been a spy. He could have been dangerous to her. He never really got over that slight because it was generally acknowledged that he was it. He was the guy. He was the best. And the injustice of not getting this post that he knew he deserved really never, never left him. So a couple of the numbers that we're doing are, are kind of bitter.
Can she excuse my wrongs with virtue's cloak? Shall I call her good when she proves unkind? Are those clear fires which vanish into smoke? Must I praise the leaves where no fruit I find? No, no, where shadows do for bodies stand. Must be abused if thy sight be dim. Cold love is like to words written on sand, or to bubbles which on the water swim. Wilt thou be thus abused still, seeing that she will write thee never? If thou canst not overcome her, will thy love be thus written ever? Thou be thus abused still, seeing that she will write thee never. If thou canst not overcome her, will thy love be thus fruitless ever? Was I so base that I might not aspire unto those high joys which she holds from me? Was they all high, so high as my desire? If she this deny, what can granted be? If she will yield to that which reason is, it is reason's will that love should be just. Dear, make me happy still by granting this, or cut off delays if that die or must. Better and times to die than for to live thus still tormented dear but remember it was I who for the sake did die contented better a thousand times to die than for to live thus still tormented dear but remember it was I who for the sake did die contented to move when deeds receive not due regard shall i speak and neither please nor be freely heard 
grief blasts the wall in vain A restless anguish must reveal She alone my wound shall know Though she will not hear All woes have end Though the delay Our patience The last song on our program, In Darkness Let Me Dwell, is generally considered one of the greatest songs in the English language, mm -hmm. and we, we firmly believe that's true. Sounds to 